Hi there. Welcome again to uh, our BSF Recovery Team uh, Dana 60 Axle Build Videos. I realize that uh, this is getting to be a little long and drawn out. Uh, that's not intended. Uh, it's just because I have a lot of information that I want to share with you. I've seen other people's build videos and there's a lot of details that they kind of skip over uh, that some of you might know uh, but others might not. So I feel like I should share all those details with you. Makes the videos a little bit long and drawn out. I apologize for that, but bear with me. We'll get to everything. So uh, we have to make some modifications to this housing. Uh, but I realized before we do, I uh, forgot to pop the outer pinion bearing and seal out. So we'll do that right now. Okay, one of the modifications we have to do is we have to drill through the housing so we can put our wires through for our e-locker. Now, the instructions are kind of generic. Uh, they aren't specific to the Dana 60. It doesn't tell you exactly where to drill the hole. What it does tell you to do is to set the differential in there, uh, in its bearings, and uh, figure out a good spot to drill the hole. We're going to take our setup bearings here and put them on the differential. Uh, I'll tell you all about setup bearings later, uh, but basically our setup bearings are just a set of bearings that will slip on by hand and slip off by hand. Now we'll take the carrier over there, set it into the housing, and so we can see where we need to drill the hole for the wires. Okay, our Eaton locking differential is in the housing. Uh, the tabs that hold the magnet are uh, just above and below the cap bolt holes here. And our wire is right here. So let's grab a light here and take a look. Now, our vent hole is right here. That's where our vent is. And it looks like we can drill that right beside or just up the ramp from our vent. Looks like that would be a pretty good spot. I would put it right, I don't know if you can see that, that would put it right about there. Let's look at it on the outside. So that looks like we should drill the hole right about here. So we'll grab a center punch and mark that. So that's where we'll drill the hole. Uh, directions say a half inch hole. But before we drill the hole, we're going to take our differential out because we don't want to get any metal shavings in our differential. We'll start out with a little bit smaller bit and work our way up to a half inch. There we go, that should be the hole we need. The next modification we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole here and put in a drain plug. It doesn't have to be very big. Uh, we got a little uh, quarter by 18 drain plug here. Uh, we do want to use a flush mounted plug because uh, there's a good chance that this differential is going to be scraping over some rocks and stumps and stuff. So we're going to drill in and put in this flush mounted quarter by 18 national pipe thread uh, plug here. First thing is we're going to pick a spot. Center punch it. Now the chart says for the quarter by 18 national pipe thread we got to drill a 7 16 hole. Uh, we're going to start out a little bit smaller and work our way up. Make it easier. Ok, 
Okay, now up to 7 sixteenths. Now, to help our tap start straight, we're going to taper the end just a little bit. Okay, we got a quarter by 18 national pipe thread tap here. That's a tapered tap. Started straight. Now a little lubricant. There's a lot of dialogue here that has great potential for some sexual innuendo. Drop a comment if you feel the need. I like a good laugh. Now remember, <clears throat> pipe threads are tapered, and we actually drilled a straight hole. So as we go in, it gets tighter and tighter. But we want to tap it deep enough so the plug is flush, but we don't want to run the tap all the way through like you would on a normal thread. The reason we go a little bit and back it up is so we cut a little metal, and then as we back it up, it breaks off the burr of the metal that it's cutting. That way we don't jam up our tap. Okay, it's sticking through a little bit now. We'll take it out and we'll see how deep our plug goes. Still sticking up a little bit. A little bit more than we want it to. We want it to be virtually flush. So we got to tap a little bit deeper. Okay, let's check it again. Look at that, it's recessed just a little bit. I like that. So we're going to stop there. It's not a real big hole, but it doesn't need to be. Just big enough to let the fluid out. All right, this is why we did this with the differential empty and no bearings in there. See all those metal shavings? Now we got to clean those out. All right, since we're at it, now's a good time to drill our third hole uh, for our spring bolts. So we have our plate that we already modified. We cut the bump stop off of the top and uh, drilled it with a half inch hole. This is off of the old uh, axle. And uh, we'll bolt it in place here. Uh, a few lock washers uh, because the spring isn't there. So we don't want to bottom out these bolts in the holes and pull the threads. But we want to bolt it in place uh, so we drill the third hole in the right spot. Uh, 
doesn't have to get bolted very tight. Now, our modification uses a half inch bolt here. We don't want to drill the housing with a half inch hole because we need to cut the threads into it. But we're going to use a half inch bit to mark the hole. Now there should be a dimple there that we can drill with the smaller drill bit. And there we go, right where we need to drill the hole. So the drill size for uh, half inch uh, national coarse threads is uh, 2764. I think that's right. Yes, 2764. But again, we're going to start with a smaller drill and uh, drill a pilot hole. Now we are concerned about how deep we drill this hole. So we're going to measure it and see how far down we are. Um, we know we can go down at least as far as this pad right here. So the pad is 1.182 down. So we got a ways to go yet. Alright, let's check it now. And we're 1.3. We're a little bit down into the below the pad here, but that's fine. Now we'll drill it to the uh, 2764. Well, that one ain't very sharp. Alright, now we can cut our threads. Being careful to start the tap nice and straight. Again, some lubricant. Okay, feels like we hit the bottom. That doesn't mean we've cut threads fully all the way to the bottom. If you look at the tap here, the tip of the tap is tapered. So what we want to do now is we want to run down through there after we clean out the hole with a bottoming tap. A bottoming tap, what's that? Well, basically that's a tap that's just cut off. You can make your own by taking an extra tap and cutting it off square just after the taper ends on the tip. All right, let's make ourselves a bottoming tap. Now, we'll go uh, square that up on the grinder and uh, just touch each little cutting edge just a tiny bit uh, to help it start. Alright, now we should be able to cut threads all the way to the bottom of the hole, or pretty close to it. That should do it. Okay, now that we got those modifications done, we can clean up our housing. We want to make sure that we have no metal debris inside. Um, also, we're going to pop the inner axle seals out before we give it a good cleaning, and uh, then we'll be back to uh, assemble the differential. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Stay tuned for the rest of our Dana 60 axle build and e locker install for the record. Keep wheeling. Be safe out there, and maybe we'll see you in the woods.